is T. And this is one of the leaders. Where is Okun? Um, Okun, I, I spoke to him earlier on, so he should be he should be around. Okay. I um yeah, I texted him and we we had a little back and forth. So I think it's gonna be available today. I gave him the time and everything. Okay, awesome. I, I, I'm supposed to have been here an hour ago, but I'm so I can barely the one do any work. You guys are presenting your team. So I can just see yeah. it and get a back scratcher to scratch my back. <laughs> Let's go ahead. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So um, let me know who you need me to bring and um, yeah, let the show go on, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely, Savage, as introduced earlier, um, team leader Peter Ob Group. Yeah. Thank you very much, Nadi Freeze. Um, uh, thank everybody. I think that it at first. I mean, first of all, for giving you know us the opportunity. Um, this is uh, this is a uh, this is a blessing for every young person who is trying to use you know their voice, who is trying to do something in this particular political climate that we found ourselves in. And guys, the sheer immensity and dedication from everybody that's on this team on this, I cannot start to explain. And one of the things that you would see is the quality of people who are standing up. This is not just about us, you know, rambling, and this is people going in and giving their time. This is not something we're doing with our spare time. This is something we're creating time for because we know and we assume that it's important. It is pivotal. It is something that we have to do. We have to be able to stand up. This is not just about ourselves right now. This is about our kids. This is about their kids. This is about... This is our, we, we are on the brink right now. It, it, this decision is going to matter a lot in moving forward, and everybody has taken it very, very seriously. And that is, Chris, we have we have such a we have a very dynamic team. We have a very cross-functional team. And if not for the fact that you had told me to uh, maybe facilitate this team, I can tell you this much: I am not worthy when it comes to the people that are on this team. I really am not. Like we had, we've been having Zoom meetings. Some of our Zoom meetings run till, for three hours because there's so many ideas. There's so much information. There's so much dedication. There's so much resilience. There's just so much that, yeah, I mean, everybody should watch out. I, I know that uh, the team will be is like a joke in a sense. You know, everybody's talking about we are, we, are, we can only talk, we're on social media, but you guys will be surprised at how strategic in the thought process these uh, these young people are. And that is free. Um, we have a very dynamic team. We have women, we have men, and we have, you know, we, 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 are, we have been that, uh, we, we, are, we, are, we are starting to act as a unit like what we want to see in a government. We want everybody to have a voice, right? And that is why, even though I am the person that you have chosen to facilitate, right? I am not the, I am just a tool. I am the houseboy here. I need all of you to know. And you will really, you will realize why that is as, as soon as you start bringing people on. And the first handle that I would like you to bring on is Priye. Her name is Priye. Her handle is at Diary of a Canadian Mom. At Diary of a Canadian Mom is the first person. And oh. this diary of an African mom, of a Canadian mom, is the first person. Of a Canadian mom, diary of a Canadian mom. That's uh, the first person. Re. Diary of a Canadian mom. Yes, I've sent her an invite. Is she on right now? Yes. And the other person is Mother Voice. M-O-T-H-E-V-O-I-C-E. -E. M O T H E. V O I C E. Oh, Mother Voice. He's joined you guys. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that you sent a lot of intelligent people my way. Like this was very easy. This was very easy. Hey guys. Hi. Hi. Hi everyone. Hi hi. Timo B. <laughs> it's so good to be here, Daddy Freeze. Thank you. Nice to see you again. Um, so I'm just going to kick off with the introduction. My name is Priya Obozoa, a concerned Nigerian 
with no affiliation to the Labour Party. On behalf of the team, I'd like to thank you for opening up your platform for this all-important conversation on the future of our dear country, Nigeria. For Team Peter Obi, this is not a debate, not another excuse to catch crews. It's not banter, none of that. This is a unique opportunity to engage with the true owners of Nigeria, the audience, the people, the youth, in the battle of the soul of our country, Nigeria. Today, we'll be presenting clear facts, evidence, lived experiences on Peter Obi and why a government formed under him is the only pathway to good governance in Nigeria. In the next few minutes, I urge you to listen and engage with my team. As you do, ask yourself these three questions. Am I not deserving of a fit? responsible and solution-oriented leader? Shouldn't my president be a person of integrity, character, capacity, competence, and possessing the true love of our country? Let me give a brief summary of where we are today. Nigeria is in a state of turmoil with rising national debts, kidnappings, massacred by bandits, rising inflation, bombings of public infrastructure, universities being shut down for months, constant floods in all our cities across the country, sections of the country being cut off from each other because of insecurity, reports of citizens being killed in error by either the military or the police, the uniformed men who are supposed to take care of us, and a mass exodus of Nigerian citizens leaving the shores of the country in search of, a green, of greener pastures, death, therefore causing the largest, most phenomenal brain drain in the history of Nigeria. It's obvious that the, pres the president, the current president, and the National Assembly have abdicated their duties, leaving governors and local authorities without any direction whatsoever. My name is Priye a member of TOB, and our task is to make the painful yet hopeful argument that Peter Obi and Dati Baba Ahmed ticket is the clear and obvious choice if Nigeria is to dis if Nigeria is not to descend into total chaos and anarchy. I'd love to invite my teammates, the intelligent Michael Obodoze, to take us down a journey of common sense. Thank you. Michael, before you talk, let me say something. When you see me clapping, I'm not clapping for Peter Obio. I'm clapping for the work these people have done. Obviously, between the last time and now, you can see how this team, if 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 our leaders work together the way this team works together, if Peter Obi can work like his team, ah, it, it's, it's, it's going to be something amazing. Can you see that it's not easy again? Oh. You guys come together. Oh. Show you the see. Team Atiku, yesterday I was on the line looking for you up and down. <laughs> Show you see what you are up against. Okay. Over to the other gentleman. Guys, put put your hands together for the good work Peter Obis has been doing. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Daddy Freeze, and good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Michael Obadozia, a concerned but hopeful Nigerian with no affiliation with the Labour Party. In order to lead the most populous nation in the world, where approximately 40% of its population is under the age of 20 years old, our next president must be physically fit. According to a Premium Times article on August the 4th, 2021, the current president had spent about 200 days in the UK for medical reasons. This equates to about 28.5 days per year over seven years. According to Section 1691 and 92 of the Labor Act of 1974, Nigerian workers are allowed up to 12 days of paid sick leave per year. It is imperative that our next president is able to adhere to the standards. During one of his lengthier absences, the vice president was left in charge. And because of his agility and ability to make common sense decisions, his impact was clearly felt in the economy and the morale of the masses were boosted. There is nowhere, absolutely nowhere in the world where a job is given to an unhealthy or unfit person. Regardless of how much we love Taribo West, 
it will be insane to have him return to the Super Eagles as a center back. We cannot repeat the mistakes of the past eight years by electing an unhealthy candidate. Nigeria is sick and needs a young, capable, and healthy leader, and that leader is Peter Obi. The mental and psychological state of an individual affects how the individual communicates. We need a president who has the ability to steer the country in the right direction, even with his words. The presidency is not a bully pulpit, but a platform to drive confidence, communicate vision, alleviate fear, and motivate all citizens to participate in the building of a better Nigeria. We do not need a ruler who would make outrageous statements like, I will make a, I will make a 50 man, million man army and we will feed them cassava, corn, and agbado in the morning and yam in the afternoon. We need a leader who will be gracious in victory and even when he's insulted. In order to rescue Nigeria from the doldrums, we need an authoritative and transformational leader like Peter Obi, who understands education is one of the pillars of a great nation. Sadly, since 1999, Nigeria has experienced 16 strikes by the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, in protest for better pay and working conditions. The current ASU strikes, strike has lasted five months, a whole five months, where the rest of the world is studying and progressing and going to school. Our students are at home. Upon assumption of office of the 17th governor of Anambra State, um, the state was ranked 36th, uh, sorry, 26th out of 36 states. By the end of the administration, Anambra State was number one. How did he accomplish this, you may ask? He did it using a four-pronged strategy of integrating technology for learning, paying teachers on time, improving welfare in schools, and good old customer service. For technological improvements, he established the Information and Communications Technology-Based Learning Program for public and mission schools, where he provided 25,000 laptops, HP laptops, not Chinese laptops, American laptops, 1,400 color printers, and internet access for all secondary schools across the state. In the area of welfare, he provided 250 power generators for all secondary schools, 500 school buses, boreholes for every school, along with improved meals. Peter Obi ensured that teachers were paid on time. This is basic, and we continue to fail at this in Nigeria. Finally, every secondary school senior prefect had the governor's personal mobile number. In some instances, he would receive a call about bad meals, and he and a segment of his cabinet will go over to those schools to experience what those students were experiencing. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time we view leadership in a different light in Nigeria. Our leaders should work for us, not us for them. On this note, I would like to welcome my intelligent and eloquent team member, Chisom. Thank you. Yeah. That phrase, the next person you got to bring on is um, Chisom Ochuko. That's Chis the next person. What? Chisom. Uh, Chisom Ochuko, that's the handle. Chisom Ochuko. Uh, Chisom Ochuko. Yes. Okay. Chisom Okay, a gentleman oh, looking for a lady. All right, he, he, yeah. he, he, and after him, who's I have both of them on? Uh, Priya, the person you had on earlier on, uh, diary of a Canadian mom is coming back. Okay, diary of a Canadian mom, of a Canadian mom, yes. Name? Yeah, okay. and that is pretty, one of the things that I want everybody to pay attention to here is how we are all coming on saying our part and we're relinquishing our position to have somebody else speak. Because that is something that we think is pivotal and important in the government that we have today. And we are trying to use ourselves as a model of how governments should run and how people should be respected and how everybody's point of view should be heard. So Chisum, welcome. I'll let you go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi. And thank you, um, Daddy Freeze, um, for this platform. Because you're giving us this opportunity, hopefully when Pitobi gets into our Sorok, 
we'll never have issues like lights going off in the middle of something this important. Those things will become things <laughs> of the past. It will never happen again. Okay. <laughs> okay. So my name is Chisom Ujuku, and I am a concerned but hopeful Nigerian with no affiliation with the Labour Party. We've said a lot, a, a lot about his um, exploits. Now let's talk about the man himself, his simplicity and his humility. I personally met him once, and that was on a flight into Lagos. I don't remember what year, I don't remember where we were coming from, I don't remember what airline, but one thing I remember is how simple he was. In fact, the only reason I realized he was on that flight because was because when we got on one of those shuttles that you take from the airplane to the terminal, I heard that his voice, that high, scratchy voice. I heard him giggling and laughing with some people in front, and that was how people realized that Peter B is actually a, was on this plane and is riding with us to the terminal. I belong to a public chat forum, and somebody said something which I just took a bit of and wanted to share, another personal experience. Open quotes, she said, in 2010, I was at the airport, and Big Mommy showed me an Ambra State governor and told me to go and greet him. To my surprise, I was not chased back. On arriving at the local airport in Lagos, he helped me lift my luggage and walked away. This was in 2010, for context. The man was already governor. He did not have any ulterior motive. So if you have any different, if you can think of any ulterior motive, why he would have been that simple and nice, please let me know. Then some people have questioned why my, me and then many other Nigerians, we always talk about his simplicity. And the simple answer, no pun intended, is this. Look around you. In a country like ours, where merely being in government at any level is assigned celebrity status. So you have the bouncers, the mopos, the convoys, and the sirens. Mr. Obi is different. In a country like ours, where ex-governors fly chartered planes and move around in convoys, paid for and fueled for by taxpayers' money, ex-governors, Mr. Obi is inspiring because he's different. Another thing Mr. Obi is lauded for is, is his legendary stinginess. Both those that like him and those that don't talk about his stinginess. So let's talk about stinginess that he phrase. In Igbo land mm. where Mr. Obi hails from, stinginess is frowned upon because people believe that when a man has money, his people should, you know, enjoy it. And so even the names given to stingy people are not, they don't sound good. So you hear names like Ake Ipo, Aka Gom, Aka Ch Aka Like Gom. even when you don't understand Igbo, just hearing it, you don't want to be associated with names like that, right? So mm. I wonder why is it that progressive Igbo people, young people with swag, living within and outside the homeland, are proud to identify themselves with an Akagom? The answer, again, is very simple. Look around you. In a country like ours, where historically leadership has shown a culture of increasing debt while productivity is falling, right? Zero accountability for public funds and just wastage of public resources. Stinginess has become a virtue. It's that simple. Now, let's talk about how he has been recognized. His person has also been recognized by people that also play the same game as he plays politics. He was assigned special advisor to the president and adopted into the president's economic management team as a governor. This doesn't happen very often. Now, what made it even more special when it happened was that he was not of the same party as the president at the time. This same man, as a non-PDP governor, was voted chairman of the Southeast Governors Forum for eight years by PDP governors. I wonder why. And then as a governor from Abga, in a country whose politics is dominated by APC and PDP, or used to be because it won't be anymore after next year, he was elected vice chairman of the National Governors Forum by the part governors of these parties twice. So my question is this. We know how astute our politicians are, how strategic they are, how smart and self-preserving they are. What is it that they saw in him that made them keep giving him these leadership responsibilities? What was it about Mr. Pito B that made even his fellow politicians value him so much? Like Josh Tufani will say, think about it. And while you're thinking about it, I would like to hand over again to my colleague, pray to continue with this delivery. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much, Shisom. You always hit the nail on the head. And I'm just going to continue from where he stopped. 
Now we know that on credibility, Peter Obi's support is so organic. It's, it's coming from the heart of Nigerians. He's getting this as a result of the policies and plans that he has for the reformation of Nigeria, which we know is from his heart. And people can feel, yes, this man is here for me. Um, instead of buying votes, no man, for instance, let me just give an example using uh, the, the way the primaries went. No man of integrity would buy votes, and nobody who has the heart of Nigerians at the, at the core of their mandate would be buying votes, not at the delegate level, not at the grassroots level, not ever. And we know that this is a very a ridiculous practice, and it does not reflect, and they're using public funds to buy these votes. This is, this is the height of an insult to Nigerians as a whole. Mr. Peter Obi was able to make the inventory problem of Nigeria, such as power, corruption, cutting down um, overheads, the issues surrounding the oil sector, Nigeria, Nigeria being a production-based country, not a consumption country, and he came up with solutions for them. He has been very practical about the processes that Nigeria needs to follow to be reformed. He has made leave his emphasis on the investment of human infrastructure. Every human life in Nigeria would matter under Peter Obi. Not some, not a few handpicked, but every single life from the villages to the cities. Nigeria needs to go through these processes in order to upscale its current situation. He did not travel for medical checkup while others were traveling going for injections and their checkup with their foreign doctors. He's traveling for research purposes, even while, while not being a president yet. Apart from the research purposes, he is traveling to establish relationships with international organizations and firming up our relationships with allies around the world. It doesn't get better than this, I can assure you. If a, a, a leader is seriously sick, and the country is seriously sick. How do we find healing? It's a question we need to answer. Mental and, and psychological fitness is paramount to decision making. Somebody who is not fit mentally will not make good decisions for you and I. On the issue of credibility as well, we know that he's very humble, he manages his resources, he is not proud, and he do, does not politicize issues concerning social welfare of the, of the Nigerian populace, not like other parties, no pun intended, who weaponize poverty, weaponize terrorism, weaponize every single ill of the society just for their own benefit. This has got to stop. We cannot hand down a generation uh, uh, Nigeria that is not working to the next generation. And another point is the empathy Peter Obi has for people. It is clear that his governance is based on empathy and the love for common man, the value of every life and, and how everyone can be increased in value that they will add to the society as opposed to being a liability and turning to crime. He believes in the Nigerian dream. We cannot afford to have any other person apart from a Nigerian at heart in Asso Rock. You cannot exhaust the list of possibilities that we, we, Nigeria will experience when the value of each and every citizen has been elevated. He is a true Democrat and his academic qualifications are not under question. We don't have any criminal records that were yet to verify. We know that he has attended schools and his education reflects in his leadership style. We're not, we're not questioning his identity. We know he, where he was born. We know where he grew up. We know the schools he went to, and these issues have come out undisputed. This is the only candidate that his qualifications and everything surrounding his identity are undisputed. It doesn't get better than this. Um, his education transcends from the theoretical aspects as proven from his background in philosophy, business, 
public administration and him applying it to government in the public sectors and succeeding as well in the private sector. He is tested and trusted. Peter Obi is a popular solution provider in both sectors and does his research with not just research, but does it with comparator countries. He doesn't tell us, look at UK, look at US. He tells us, hey, Egypt, just next door. Hey, Morocco, just next door. If this is what they did to solve this problem that we have, a similar problem that we have, identifying gaps in critical sectors and also determining our priorities as a nation. Well-informed decision-making, I cannot emphasize it enough, but well-informed decision-making is something we cannot, I repeat, we cannot do away with. It is impossible to do away with it. And for after this, um, I'd like to invite the delectable Mr. Mark. I don't know if you're there, but you need to hop on this live and let us know who Mr. Obi is. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pray. That was absolutely remarkable. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, are, that, sorry. Hold on. A lot of people are saying they're enjoying the debate. It's not the debate yet. To, this is in Peter will be presenting. Uh, We've yeah. not started. They've not started. Tomorrow is not started. Thursday is team article. Hmm. The debate proper starts next week. So if this is one team coming up with this much resourcefulness, you need to know what is on the burner. So let me hand over back. Uh, guys, remember to send me stars on Facebook if you're enjoying the live. Uh, let me hand over back to Deji Savage, African Go Savage. Thank you very much, guys. Um, what you're seeing here is a lot of dedication. Like I said, everybody on this team is passionate. There's a flow. There's a strategy. There's a way that we have all come together and have an input. There's not one person who is speaking. You would realize that everybody's speaking about a particular perspective, and there's a flow. That is because we are all thinking with a hive mindset, and everybody is a part of the team. The next person that's going to be going is um, Mark. His handle is at Maconi underscore site. That is at M-A-C-O-N-Y underscore site. And um, let's try and get him on. Then I'll also give you the handle for the next person. Maconi. Say that again. Yes. M-A-C-O-N-Y underscore site. Maconi underscore site or site S I T E yes site yeah I can't see him Maconi you can M A R I think C M A R that's M A R yeah sorry I have um I have a I have a wrong sorry Chinedu okay send him a name all right is it thank you very much. Never happened before. I've never had life long. Hello, got the freeze. Hi, how are you doing? Oh. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> how I, are you doing? I'm good. I chatted with you some time ago. I sent you a message concerning crypto dollar. I don't know if you remember. Yes, I do. I do clearly. I do very. <laughs> That's me. How, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Um, right. That the freeze. Um, the um, union of everyone talking today. It's not because of anything we want to get from this. Hmm. My friend Priya just said something about um, Peter B's campaign and everything is strictly organic. He didn't go around sharing any kind of um, incentive money rights because presently you see all the politicians now, they are sharing bags and their names and pictures are in front of all the fruits and everything they share. Now, the only time I see anybody sharing money online was a girl that was today that saved money and said she's donating it to Peter before his campaign. She came online to do that. Now, one of the problems we have in Nigeria, one of the two problems is religion and politics. And it's the same concepts the religion and politics are using to captivate the mind of everyone, as we've been preaching against all these fallacies, 
in the Bible and everything. I bet you a lot of people are against you, but I tell you today, if the pastor wake up tomorrow and say that thing to you saying, I bet you they're going to agree. But because it's coming from another source. Now, Nigeria is set up with a corrupt structure from the beginning. Now, the present structure is corrupt and is difficult to break into due to the network of cabals set up to run underground affairs of the nation. The present construct has designed an individual not to reason outside the box, but to reason and conform to a systemic, a systemic corruption that has led everyone to captivity. It's very difficult. As a fact, I'm even wondering why are we having a debate? Why are we even arguing when it's obvious that this set of people have been ruling the nation for decades of years and we are just moving around with people? They have no interest of humanity other than themselves. That phrase, do you know that Nigeria, the debt we are going now, has let we have debt that gone up to 20 years if we want to pay it. Even our kids may not have the capacity to pay off these debts. This is a nation that is handing down debt up to three generations without frugality and elimination of inflated spending. We are doomed to collapse if we keep going on this route. As a matter of fact, they are still planning to borrow more money. We have the highest, I mean, the highest paid senators in the whole world. The whole world. We have the highest paid senators in the whole world. So we have the worst laws, non-existent existence laws in Nigeria. Our external debt has gone from 3.3 billion US dollars in 2007 to 40 billion dollars in 2022 and it's still rising and they're still thinking of borrowing more the one we have presently will last for it to pay back which we're not sure paying back will last up to 28 before we pay back and this money are in the pocket of some greedy politicians who can never have their fill just like putting water in the basket this is a posterous and honestly an economic taboo one must wonder who the economic advisors are. We know, we now know that the stretch of Baghdad does not equip to common sense. I tell you. Now, one of the other reasons we should think about now is P2B, outstanding economic indices. This guy and his, uh, and his uh, and device, they have clear cut indices, ratios, analysis on how to solve the problem of Nigeria. They stated it, enumerated it with solutions, power sector, all sectors. Now this guy is traveling around to get facts, to solve the problems. I watched one of um, the other, I mean, up uh, this thing online, and they were asked, what do you have for the youth? One reason he gave, one reason I watched it online, he said they're going to invite the children of all the politicians to come and be on the forefront to campaign. Is that what you have for the youths? What are the programs stated for the youth? They have nothing, no plan. All they know about right now is the power is their turn to rule. Nothing more. Nothing more. So with these few points, I just feel Nigerians should reason and break out from that circle of systemic corruption, they made us believe that these are the only people that can rule us. These are not the only people. Look, we have resources. Nigeria has a lot of resources, human resources, natural resources, to make a Nigeria a great nation. Why are we subjecting ourselves to these few selected people to sit on us and take a decision and pass power from themselves from one person to another? You know, we can keep going on and on, but for now, I will just have to stop and let one other person speak. Thank you very much. Mr. Kohn, Mr. Kohn is online. Yes, sir. Okon Lagos. Yes, sir. How you doing, bro? Yes. I'm good, bro. Uh, I, you've noticed I'm trying to add you for 
guess what this was that version, right? Sorry, I didn't hear you. You're breaking. I was trying to add you. Oh, 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 yes, yes, yes. I'm sorry. It's okay. So, I get any feedback from the phone I did, bro. I'm okay. I'm doing okay. All right, bro. Yeah. Uh, that is please. The next two people to come on, I'll give you the handles. Um, Steve DK. His handle is Harmlessy. That is H A R M L E S S Y. H A R M L E S S Y. All right. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I know him. I know this gentleman. Yeah. He wasn't part of the selected team earlier on. He joined later. So, uh, that depends. What had happened was, even though you had, uh, you know, we had you, 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 you based off of your discretion with people that came on that day, chose some people. Our group is a very democrat democratic group, essentially. So we revamped ourselves and we reorganized. And it was a matter of whoever is competent and can do better is the one who gets to speak not necessarily who was who came first or who is anywhere so um it's you guys you guys are the team. absolutely and that was and that was your goal regardless so i was able we were able to actually um build up of that yes so that was what happened thank you very much and that is i told you i i almost have to relinquish my position because these guys just yeah they blew me out of the water so i have to take the back seat and listen to them Welcome, bro. Welcome. Thank you. Hi, Daddy Freeze. <laughs> Hi, Ocon of Lagos. I, I no, greet no, you. No. Uh, I want to talk in the issue regarding security hmm. in Nigeria. Very important. You know, when, when we say security, we think of the military, the police, but it doesn't just end there. First, let me speak about natural disaster and natural security. It's not a story or it's no longer a rumor what has been happening in Lagos, especially in Lake. But we could also remember somewhere around September 2012, the same disaster struck Anambra State in areas like Anam, Ndikem, Ayamelum local government, which comprises of Anako, Omo, and um, Omasi, including Obaru local government. But you know what happened then? Mr. Pitobi did not just sit in the government house and give orders on rescue mission. He went himself on the 29th day of September 2012. He didn't just go there just to inspect. He went there as an Anambrarian to rescue fellow citizens of Anambra State. And now let's go into areas of the military diplomatic security, and some other things. As Nigerians, we've been tagged a terrorist country. In fact, we are number six in the World Index. And this is according to the vision of humanity.org. It's verifiable. As a Nigerian, you cannot proudly hold the green passport outside Nigeria and say, I'm a Nigerian. In, in fact, frankly speaking, I believe it's one of the hardest things to do right now, to say I'm a Nigerian outside Nigeria. Why is it so? Poor leadership. Everything goes down to poor leadership. Those countries we've been running to, America, what have you, they have one thing in common, good and transparent leadership. We can also remember during the tenure of Itobi, about kidnappings that have been happening in Anambra, Anambra State, of which the current governor was a victim because his father was also abducted. What happened during those times? Pitobi did not just give orders. Those times, Pitobi was sick and tired of the then commissioner of police, and he requested for a new commissioner of police. He was the only governor who did that. And if you go back to history regarding those times in Anambra State, you would also witness that those were the time Anambra State experienced peace. As an Anambra youth, as, 
as at then or before the time of PTOB. You cannot just travel home and enjoy spending Christmas with your family without the thought of being kidnapped or being killed. But during the time of PTOB, Anambra State was as peaceful or more peaceful than every other place in Nigeria. And I can proudly say that. Then bringing common sense into the security aspect. The world has gone beyond fighting with guns, fighting with whatsoever the military has to offer. Now we're going into economic and pandemic wars. We need a leader that doesn't just have or don't only have an experience when it comes to weapons, military, or what have you, that experienced the uh, pre-colonial, pre-independent and post-independent uh, regime. But we need a leader that understands what it means to fight economic war. Look at the value of Naira to every other currency, especially in Africa. We're going down drastically. Now let's come in back to the issue of pandemic. Imagine the SARS-CoV-19 was a war. Where is Nigeria? Imagine it was an epidemic war. Where can we find in Nigeria in the world map right now? We need a leader that can not just only scream about employing 50 million youths, whereas you have only 60, about 68 million youths that are between the age of 18 to 45. And out of that 68 million, the DFA, as of 2017, it's still verifiable. The DFA made mention that Nigeria, when I say DFA, I mean the Department of Foreign Affairs, made mention that we have about 20 million Nigerians outside Nigeria. The youths are also included. So I keep wondering, if you minus 20 million from 68 million, it's even way less than the 50 million he's going to employ, unless there is somewhere else, maybe in neighboring countries, we hope to employ youths to join our military. So with all this said and done, I also want to invite a brother and a teammate who is more experienced than myself to come up and speak more about P2B and its agenda. Thank you very much, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, who's the team member? Uh, it's Chisom Ojuku. Okay, Chisom Ojuku. Yes. All right, so Chisom. Thank you. All right, Chisom Ojuku has been invited. Thank you very much. So, guys, everything that has been said here today has been um, carefully organized. There's a flow. Everybody is. Yeah. Everybody has a part to play. Everybody has something to do. Everybody had um, something to give, and that's what we're trying to exemplify here. And uh, the team has gone through a lot of work uh, to work together as a team to be able to come up with this. And um, I hope that you guys um, are enjoying what you're listening to. And not just enjoying it, you're also being informed and you're being aware. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. We have not gone, this is a, an eye level of how we want to have the conversation. And um, I'm encouraging everybody who's listening here today that when that starts, when the debate actually starts, um, you guys will be more, you'll be blown away Apparently, uh, the other group the other day said a lot of things that sounded very nice, but none of them are verifiable. We will verify everything that we say. And quite frankly, we are here to speak about Peter Obi and we are here to put our candidate out there. But let me tell you something. If anybody wants to come for us, we have all the facts. We have all the figures. And we will also be able to defend uh, Peter Obi. And one thing you also notice here is none of these people speaking are card-holding party members. This is something that I want every Nigerian to listen to right now. None of us are affiliated by any standard with Labour Party or with Peter Obi. We are all Nigerians. And I saw a couple of comments that are centered around 
but um, all of us being from a certain group of Nigeria. No, I am a Yoruba boy. And some other people who have come here are not all from the East. So this is not about culture, tradition, creed, caste, religion, idiosyncrasies and ideologies. This is about something needs to give, something needs to change. And that's the party that we have all banded under. So I'll let you some continue. Thank you very much, Isom. Thank you so much, African God. Well said. Thank you again, Daddy Freeze, for um, this second chance to come up. Okun of Lagos, you were not here when I first came in. I agree with us. Um, so just taking from what Steve said, Steve talked about a lot of um, crisis management. He talked about things that happened during Obi's time as governor and how he handled those crises. Um, let's also talk about some political crisis because, I mean, it would be amiss for us to pretend that being president or being a leader of a country as diverse as Nigeria can be done in politics. Now, when it comes to handling political crises, there is probably nobody as experienced as Pito in handling political crises. This was a man who challenged his electoral mandate for three years in court. He, the, the, the election happened and victory was given to another party. Convinced that his, his um, victory has been taken away from him, he went to court. He won in the courts and reclaimed his mandate after three years. Now, you know what, imagine in the, our Nigerian political sphere, you know what could have happened in those three years. There would have been hundreds of others. Come and be minister of this. Come and be this one. Just take this one. Just take, take this contract. Take this one. But the man stood firm. And for three years, fought it and eventually won it. Now, he was, he was also um, the governor who sought the interpretation of tenors of governors from INEC. So when he was told that his ele his, an election was supposed to take place in Anambra, he went to court and challenged the saying that his tenure had not expired. And that was overrun. And then the elections were cancelled. These were very key political crises that sugar number at the time, and he was in the center of it. So if it comes to crisis management skills, add this one I just talked about, so everything Steve just told you, and everything we have told you about the man, the brother knows how to handle crisis. Now, let's also talk about his availability as a leader, right? Now, this will be arguably, arguably the most interviewed politician in Nigeria, in and out of office. Talk about uh, print media, talk about the radio, talk about live stages, talk about TV. He has been on all of them. His willingness to show up and always talk about Nigerian problems and the solutions to these problems is unparalleled. Like, he is constantly, it, it is difficult for you to hear his voice now, even without seeing him and not recognize the voice. Not because the voice is fantastic. Because, I mean, if we're being honest, it's not one of the best, right? But we have heard him so many times. We know the man. We know his voice. And he's constantly in our ear talking about this thing. Now, compare this to a country where even leaders' availability to the people is tough. Hmm. I spent a lot of years in Surulere. And I have experiences that we will talk about eventually where that show that even your local representatives are not available to you, even in a local constituency like Surulere. And so I think that this readiness is one of the reasons why people love him. Fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you see, it's also one of the reasons why people don't like him as much. Now, to address another need, so maybe you like the man, maybe you think we're making good points, but I will make this one last point before I hand over to another brother of mine. The reason you need to take what we are talking about here seriously and P2P seriously is because one of the number one problems in Nigeria is crippling leadership deficits. Mm. Once the average Nigerian, it's as if it's a normal thing, like once the average Nigerian leaves Nigeria, they, they, they explode, they begin to do good things, right? Occasionally, we have to come back and do things, but talk about the majority of it. In fact, we know how we say it. When somebody leaves the country after a while when they post a picture the next thing you start seeing is ah your real complexion don't come right it's like they've been holding you back in this place now because you have left you have now you know what japa is now a phenomenon that should be studied in our universities in fact if they don't study it soon enough harvard will pick it up so they should probably start it very soon 
And like, and I saw it, a, a blog title, uh, Daddy Freeze and Oko, and I saw a title that made me very sad. It said, the Nigerian dream is to leave Nigeria. That is enough to convince you of why all of us should be together and get on this train. It's on this note that me, I'll stop again and then hand over to another man, another strong force who knows what he's talking about when he comes to this person that we're talking about. And he will go on from there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, bro. Um, that is free is, um, the next handle is going to be at ek on the, uh, ek dot uzoma. That's the next handle. Ek dot uzoma is the next um, person that is going to come up and speak. How many people do we have left? That's it. Wow. All right. If you want us, if if you want us to speak more, we are welcome. But we are trying to take your time into consideration, and we don't have to talk too much if we have Guys, quality have things to say. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Chris, and thanks, African God. Thanks, uh, uh, Okon. Now let's let's have a frank conversation. Nigerians, Nigeria belongs to you. Forget everything you've been told by these politicians. Nigeria is yours. You know why? The Constitution says so. Section 14 of the Constitution says that the Federal Republic of Nigeria shall be a state based on the principles of democracy and social justice. And it's, it says that the federal government, that first, sovereignty belongs to the people of Nigeria. You listening from whom government through this constitution derives all its powers. Sovereignty belongs to you from whom the government derives its power. The security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose, primary purpose of government. I'm reading the Nigerian constitution. So for once, think about yourself. For once, be a bit selfish. Just think about yourself. How have you fared if you're old enough since 1999? You're doing well for yourself. You've gotten your own electricity, two generators. You have a gate that is almost as high as your house. You have electric wire barbs all around your house. You even need to lock up your generator in a cage with everything the government has not done for you see how good you have fed look at where you are think about it if for once in your lifetime you experience governance according to the constitution where the government's primary responsibility would not be you know partying would not be taking the lives of nigerians as a joke Nigerians die in their hundreds and we party in Asorok. Nigerians die in their hundreds and we travel out. For the first time, Peter Obi offers you as Nigerians an opportunity to experience leadership. Preparation is key to any endeavor whatsoever. Peter Obi has gone to Cambridge. He's gone to Harvard. He's gone to Lagos Business School. He's gone to the uh, Columbia Business School. He studied management. He studied philosophy. He's been a past, governor, a past governor. He's excelled in business. He's been chairman of Fidelity Bank. He's been chairman of a lot of organizations. This man is prepared. So for once, gets someone, like this election process, it's like a job interview. All these other people are hiding from you. You are the ones to select your leaders. Everyone is hiding. There's one person who is, who, who is on, on Arise News. He's on channels. He's, on, he's everywhere. You ask a question, he has an answer. That is the type of leader we want. And that is the leader we present to you all. Let's not take Nigeria as a joke. We have a lot to give the world. But let's allow our potential Ben, our, our, our potential values to become kinetic, to become obvious to the world. Peter B is the man that can do it. I'll pass back to you, 
African God. Thank you very much. Um, I have. I also have something that I've prepared that I'd like everybody to hear, um, just like my team members have, and this is just rounding up. Right. Um, the definition of insanity is doing things the same way and expecting a different result. Nigeria has been caught up in this cycle of insanity, but not for lack of reasonable and intelligent citizens, no. This cycle of waste, hardship, and insecurity has become second nature because, the because of the recycling of bad leaders who belong or have some affiliation with two parties who have exchanged power from one to another for over 16 years. The concept of having a prudent, intelligent, and smart leader who can stand up straight, flip note pages, a leader who has a sound education with certificates that can be verified as proof, a leader who cares for education and saves for the future and posterity, a leader who is not wanted by any international body or government on corruption charges. This idea has eluded us for the longest time. But now there's hope. Nigerians don't have to choose from a lesser of two evils, but instead, good has been offered on a platter of gold. But the question is, are we going to choose good? Uh, we are not necessarily here to debate. We are here to remind you. We are here to validate your feelings, uh, your hardships, your hardships and your pain. Uh, we are here as son of the soil to protect the future of the unborn, which has partly been stolen by thieves who do not have the decency to hide, but will rather show their faces and even want to contest an election, the effrontery. And even more bold and shameless is the idea of youth whose future has been stolen because of this thieving defending these unscrupulous individuals. A people that elect corrupt politicians, imposters, thieves, and traitors are not victims. They are accomplices. This was said by George Orwell. I am not here to debate or convince you of anything. I am here to appeal and beg that we stop being accomplices to black, bad leadership, that we stop sabotaging our own future and that of our kids. I'm here for awareness, awareness that you can verify because I have proof, living proof, Proof that APC and PDP cannot help Nigeria. You are that proof. When was the last time you had electricity? Hmm. That the freeze two seconds ago, your electricity just went out. Can you afford three square meals? How was traffic today? Has your parents' pension and gratuity been paid? You are still at home as a result of ASHU. They haven't resumed. Are you safe? Have you recovered as a result of the water damage when it rained? Do you feel secure traveling? Who is responsible for the Owo Church massacre? Another question to you is, where are the Chibo girls till today? And lastly, who gave the order at Lekki Toll Gates? That is your awareness. That is your proof. We cannot continue like this. We refuse to continue like this. We cannot keep doing things the same way and expecting a different result. That's just plain insanity. Something has to give. Something must give. And that thing is here. Peter Obi, thank you very much. Hmm. Okon Lagos, over to uh, you. Okay. Well, I, I, I wouldn't want to overflock the issue. I believe that um, a well put together team, very formidable team with comprising of people with very deep intellect and uh, with a huge sense of um, oratory prowess. Deji is here. He has done justice to it. Um, lots of people. Uh, and we still have people. And lots, lots of people that we have not even unveiled. Um, uh, like I said earlier, and I don't want to um, overflow the issue. Let me just give a little pinch and then uh, sit back at my armchair 
and then get myself intellectually entertained uh, by these great minds that make up the team that will be. But looking at um, Pinochet and Atiku, genuinely, okay, looking at Tinubu, Tinubu, he did a lot to bring the Buhari's administration, I mean, Buhari, um, to come in and serve us as a president. I think it is either Tinubu is very selfish or wicked. Okay, if you have the blueprint, if you have the magic one that will turn black to white, that will swing the economic fortunes of this country from very bad to very good, why don't you lend it? Why did why did you have why did what what stops you from lending that formula to Buhari that you brought in? Why do we have to stay? for eight years and get tortured to wait for you uh, or for your messianic uh, arrival uh, to come and um, doesn't work. It is wrong. It is very unpatriotic. So it's very morally low uh, of someone who would want to um, be president. And for Atiku, well, I don't think that anything Atiku is going to do very different. It's, 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 there's nothing he's going to do very different. And, and um, as far as Peter will be, Peter will be, Peter will be, it's a breath of fresh air, a breath of moral fresh air, a breath of diplomatic fresh air. So Nigeria, Nigeria already is so much notorious in the community and League of Nations for corruption. And if we have to bring someone who is going to be a leader, who is going to be diplomatic and representative of a country that is notorious for corruption, a people who are, are, are judged as very corrupt and morally low, then it has to be someone whose moral life is contrastive to that allegation. Hmm. And Peter, yes, Peter Obi presents the right formula and square peg in a square hole as far as that is concerned. So I don't even think Nigeria should be, or Nigerians should be hesitant about the choice of Peter Obi at the leadership of this country. And it, 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 it should be he should be walk in the park. It should be a cakewalk. Um, well, I I know that power is not given, taken, and we owe ourselves, we owe our generation, the duty, the honors of taking back our country. You know, and we're going to do that within. The, 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 the limits of the law, legality, uh, and patriotism. I believe so. Um, thank you so much, Daddy Freeze. I will always remember this and I will see that this is um, a very patriotic move from you. I think this is deeper than Instagram. I think this is deeper than um, social media. I think you're doing this. You have that burning desire to, yes. I think you have that burning desire in you to effect positive change, you know, in this country. And then to look at Nigerians and then say, okay, fine. Which um, or who is your pick as far as the presidency of this country is concerned? And then hence this exercise, which promises to be very interesting, which promises to be, um, refreshingly fit for every reasonable mind. Thank you very much, Okon. Um, that if, yeah, just like Okon said, that if we really appreciate, you know, you giving your platform to do this. 
um naturally for entertainers it's not <laughs> this is not the best thing to this is not a very good use of your time financially but um you know it is just it just speaks to um you trying to you want to make some change and you want to be objective up, about it his eyes are his eyes are saggy you know, you know yeah he's waking up and getting things done you know I got you. and and ask him how does this translate to naira and kobo for you dollar and cent pounds and pence you only do not know if not for if not for stark naked patriotism big up yes. bro thank you yeah thank you so thank you very much for that um Finish. Yeah. Yeah, my last word is for everybody under the sound of my voice. This is not about culture, tradition, religion, ideologies, idiosyncrasies or anything like that. This is just about pure hardship, suffering, difficulty. And when you go out tomorrow as a Nigerian, I want you to look at take everything in. Look at the kids on the side of the road. Look at the children that should be in school. Think about that for a second, because for the longest time, I think we are not able to see the big picture, right? And the proof of why we cannot allow these people to continue ruling is all around us. We see it on a daily basis. It is the naira. It is the fact that you know you are not safe. It is fact that uh, five-year-old kids who should be in school are running after buses and cars in old ups. Right. It is the fact that when you go out of your house, as a result of corruption and lack of regulation, a trailer that is not supposed to be on the road at the same time which you can fall on your car and you can die. Nigeria has become somewhat of a death trap. Nowhere safe anymore. Right. And that is a country where a lot of money is being borrowed for security, but the ammunition and the guns and all the artillery keeps ending up in the hands of the terrorists that are terrorizing the government. Something is wrong. There is a problem somewhere. So this is not about APC for me. This is not about PDP for me. This is not about Labour Party for me. Our party should be our suffering. It should be hunger. It should be the lack of amenities. It should be the fact that there is no proper drainage system. It should be the fact that the schools are on strike. It should be the fact that the future of children are being stolen on a daily basis. That is our party. There's no such thing as APC. There's no such thing as PDP anymore. Let us look for who is competent and let us throw our weight behind them, right? Guys, there's no... I, I, just think about it. I, and I will leave everybody with this. This is will be the last thing I say. Just ask yourself. Just think for a second. If you will tell your child right now or your sibling or anybody that you know, you have Atiku, you have Tinubu, and you have Obi. Please think. Which one of these people would you tell your child to emulate? Which one of these people would you want to influence your child? That is what I leave you with tonight. Thank um, you very much. Deji, you even forgot to. I think yeah, you. I think you mentioned it passively. Uh, passively, yeah. Um, every Nigerian home is um, a micro government. Every Nigerian home is a micro government. You get into a house, you get into a, and you get into a conventional Nigerian home. You're going to see a gate. It's going to be a, it's likely going to be a gated property with a very high fence, and that high fence there, you're going to see um, electric fence. That looks like a state-owned property. That looks like a prison facility. It actually looks like a prison facility. You move in there, you see water tank, meaning you provide water for yourself. That is supposed to be a basic amenity that the government ought to provide for you. And you go in there, and then you see a generator, uh, a generating plant, a power generating plant there. It shows, or it's a pointer to the fact that the government is supposed to provide you with power. And you see armed policemen, or possibly maybe vigilante, there on the streets, it's a pointer also to the fact that the, gov the government has failed in security and then uh, the responsibility of getting yourself secured and then your household is hugely dependent on you, which is absolutely not supposed to be so. And possibly maybe you're the one who, you're the one who took um, a, a caterpillar or something to grade the route to your own house. Or there are some people who even um partially construct the roads 
to their own houses. It's also a pointer to the failure of government to provide the basic amenities for you. I mean, uh, how can one person be a government to his own uh, household? That is what happens in Nigeria. You copy one and paste on every single household, and that's the case. And um, we have been so, we have suffered so much to a point that we do not know the difference between privileges and rights. A government will do um, a, a, a one kilometer road and then they will call for commissioning. And people will dance and then thank the government for doing roads. Please, if the government does not construct roads, who will? Is it me? Is it you, Freeze? Is it you, Deju? Uh, are you the one to construct roads? So we should try and bring in someone who will change the mindset and turn our mentalities from the beggarly kind of mentality, Hassan, to the mentality that is, um, it's, 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 it's something that at least something we, we, can, we can look at ourselves with a sense of pride that, okay, yes, we are Nigerians and um, we can do better. And we can live better because we actually deserve better. You know, not anyone, anyone throwing anything to us and then we take and scramble for it like scavenging dogs. You know, and that's the state that have left us. And it's sad. It's, 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 it's heart-wrenching. One yeah. final, final word. I'm just following the chat and I see a lot of people are interested in joining the team and joining uh, to, uh, um, you know, have these conversations within the team. We're excited to have you all. You could email Peter Obi team at aol.com. Peter Obi at aol.com. Uh, it's a lot of work. So if you're coming, know that there will be a lot of work for you to do. Um, and we would also share a link to a Google form that people can sign up on. We are really open. You know, we want everyone to be involved. And one last word, we can do this thing. We can save Nigeria. Absolutely. We've got the power. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the Peter OB team. If you're watching live on Facebook, please remember to get me some stars. Uh, they really help in supporting um, the channel. Uh, big shout out to you, Deji Anokon. You guys have done well. I'm sure Team Tinubu is watching. I'm sure uh, Team Atikutu is watching. Uh, you guys have given a presentation like you guys went to school to study this and you've had less than a week to actually put this together and come to think of the fact that you guys don't know each other from anywhere. Uh, most of you were selected online and most of you, I just put up Deji's video and said, you know what, you guys go and follow this guy, reach out to him and be a part of his team if you are interested in supporting people. Um, you guys have put together an amazing package um, right now I, I, I can't take any side so I'm just going to keep quiet but I must say I'm tremendously impressed uh, tomorrow um, I'm sure Bongoli and his team are also working very hard to come and uh, try to shake the foundations of whatever assertions you guys made now let me remind you um, and you need to keep this in mind. We're also going to have a fact finder team. We're going to have a team leaders team. Where all team leaders across the parties are going to be team leaders, Peter B, team leaders, Tinubu, and team leaders, Atiku. It's going to be a group of just six people and I, the seventh person. The modalities for the discussion and debates for next week are going to be agreed upon by you guys. If you like making a fight on yourself, if you like making a beat on yourself, at the end of the day, whatever you all agree on is what we're going to debate on. If you guys want to debate on us, the negatives of your candidates and you all agree, we're going to start with negatives. If you guys want to debate on the positives, but just so you can't come and say, eh, in 2019, Peter will be bought 17 Mercedes Benz. There's a team whose duty is going to be to make sure that whatever fact you present is going to be verifiable. 
And if you present a fact that the next week or a few days later turns out to be unverifiable or un you're going to lose points. So it's up to you guys. This is going to be as democratic as possible. Um, Atiku's team is also gearing up. Uh, it looks like they might have Reno. If they have Reno, just know that Reno is going to come with a lot of facts and figures and it could get quite messy. So you guys prepare yourselves. Bongoli has also done an amazing job with his team and we're going to be watching them tomorrow. But I'm glad I started with the Peter Obi team because you guys have shown cooperation. You have shown um, relentlessness. Uh, Deji's on my case all the time that he frees. These people had this opportunity. When are you going to give us our own? Uh, tomorrow's team is not going to have the time you guys had today because initially you guys didn't have any time at all. So um, this was a discussion between uh, African God and I, and I said, you know what? I'm going to set aside a day for Peter Obi's team to be able to express themselves properly. Proper expression um, the other day, so they'll just have exactly one hour to present their team members and do everything. You guys had about almost two hours, the way I'm looking at it. So, uh, thank you all too for dedicating your time to this. All the ladies too. I'm proud that you guys had a team that comprises of both male and female. That I like and that I want to see in every team. I want to see the women coming up strong. I want to see the men also representing. Uh, and at the end of the day, I must say, good work. Thank you so much. And may God bless you all. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Mm -hmm.